You're listening to Lead, Sell, Grow, the Human Experience Podcast. I am your host, Eric Konovalov, and I believe that we can achieve everything we want if we take our leadership, sales ability, and personal growth to a higher level. On this show, we share ideas on how to break through our invisible boundaries, start taking steps towards our dreams, and create the life we desire. I invite you to open your mind to new possibilities, new ideas, and to the truth that everything you want is possible for you. Thank you for being here and welcome to the show. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Lead, Sell, Grow, the Human Experience Podcast. I'm so lucky to have you as my listeners. If you have not done so yet, head on over to Facebook and check out Lead, Sell, Grow, the Human Experience Mastermind. would love to see you in a group. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear some of your advices on topics and maybe guest suggestions that you have. Put them in a group. All right. I'm not going to keep my guest waiting today because he's an awesome friend of mine, uh, Jose Escobar. He's the founder and CEO of the Entrepreneur's Bookshelf. His best-selling program, The Morning and Evening Routine Mastery, has generated over six figures in only seven months. He's also the founder of the Connected Leaders Academy that has surpassed the six-figure mark in under five months and has rapidly grown its members globally. He's an international best-selling author and has a new book coming out in January called Winning the Day. Jose is a speaker, a high-performance coach, and a badass Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. With all of that, He's also a father of five children. So if you think you don't have time, that's an excuse. Put it away. Jose, welcome to the show. Uh, Thank you so much for having me, Eric. That was awesome. Thank you. Dude, so we got, I think we got connected through Ed Reed. Um, I don't think I can verify. That's 100% accurate. Uh, Ed Reed here in uh, Poolsville, Maryland, reached out to me one day. He's like, dude, man, I have a guy, sales guy. awesome down to earth very successful he's in our backyard you got to meet this guy and i said let's make it happen and that was a wrap that was awesome man ed is such a great guy i've known him for years we met it uh through the john maxwell team and um where we really connected was you were leading the 75 hard challenge for i think like 11 or 12 people that signed up in the group and i don't think we ended up with 11 or 12 on day 75 but you were there well i started probably a week later, but we all finished. Right. And uh, I got to see your leadership because you kind of took it on yourself to lead everybody through that program. And the dropout rate in 75 hard is crazy. I got to see you with your entrepreneur's bookshelf. You're an avid reader. You're very disciplined. I love that. And so when I heard your new book was coming out, I reached out to Jose and I'm like, dude, let me help you promote it because what you're doing, the discipline that you've had for years, a lot of people can benefit from. So before we get into how awesome you are now, because you look like a gangster. And I've told you that the first time I saw you, you're all tatted up. I yeah, yeah, I got a, you looked at me and you're like, you got a few things going here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the first time you met me, you looked at me, you're like, I want to like, I want to roll with you in like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm like, dude, um, talk to me about your, if, if you're okay with it, I like to talk about the journey, right? Who were you before you started, before, before you became who you are now? Yeah, that's the fun part, you know, because everybody has a story and I think the story is what makes the person and what makes the person ultimately is what adds value to others to inspire and motivate and really take everybody to the next level. So for me, um, without going into the weeds, right. But just generally speaking, in terms of what I, where I was, uh, I came, uh, so I, I was born in DC. I was born in Washington, DC and my, my parents, uh, they're both, um, they immigrated here from Guatemala, Central America. My dad came when he was like 21 years old, something like that. My mom was like 17 ish going on 18, still in Guatemala. They already had two kids. They had two kids at a, at a young age. My two older brothers, I'm one of four boys. And uh, my dad came first to this country, left my mom and my two brothers, older brothers in Guatemala to really come down here to make a better life for for us, right? And he was in construction, building houses. He was um, doing cleaning dishes and restaurants. And then he graduated from cleaning dishes to 
um, you know, doing the uh, like a bus boy and then the cleaning and then the server and then a supervisor, then manager. And, and then uh, uh, he was the regional manager for uh, Ruby Tuesdays at one point for the East Coast. And then he ended up owning a couple of restaurants. So he went through the whole chain, right, the process. But he came to this country with no money, no English, little education. Uh, when I say little education, I mean like less than high school, right? So it was like really tough. Uh, for them in the beginning so he eventually brought my my mom and uh, I was born here in DC so I was and then my younger brother a couple years later was born in Baltimore so again one of four boys and we were four young kids like not that far apart in age in a, a one a two-bedroom apartment and all four of us shared a room um, we didn't have money we uh, we understood this but we never felt it because we always had food we always had shelter we always had clothes and we would go to school and the one thing we did feel is that we didn't really have much supervision growing up as kids, right? The supervisor, the super, the, the parent was really my older brother for, for a long time because my mom was, you know, cleaning multiple houses a day. She was cleaning like four houses a day. And my dad was never home. He was only home, like at least for the first number of years until I was like eight or nine years old. He was always like doing the, the houses in the daytime and then the restaurants in the evening. And he would come home and he would sleep for like three hours and wake up the shower and go and leave all day and do it all over again, right? Man. So my mom was the one who was really raising us and, you know, it was like really uh, tough and she was barely home. So, you know, she went to clean multiple houses a day, three or four a day. And then my older brother was kind of like making us dinner and was doing all kinds of stuff for us. And, and he was like eight or nine years old, you know, so, you know, imagine wow. that. Uh, but that's where I, that's where I came from in terms of like, just like the initial stage and uh, fast forwarding. I was a good kid, uh, always a good kid, a heart-centered kid. I always like got the family together, my brothers to watch movies whenever we could. And, um, you know, we were never completely deprived, but we just didn't have a lot of money. So we would eat beans and rice all the time or whatever. But my parents somehow always found a way to make sure we were loved and had a little bit of fun. I would get like a PlayStation. We went to Disney World one time on a road trip uh, and did things like that. And as time progressed, next thing you know, um, I, I lost my way in middle school. Uh, I started getting bad grades, started hanging out with the wrong kids, got kicked out of a school. Then I went to another school, got kicked out of that school. Then I went to a private school and they almost kicked me out. The nuns like got me and they said, listen, <laughs> you know, this kid, this kid is like, he has to go, whatever. But they kept me in there. High school it was reckless. I got into party mode. I got into all kinds of nonsense and drinking and partying and women and you name it. And, um, and I, I was like that. I hung out in that department for like at least 12, 12, 13, 14 years, just doing that, right? And not maximizing my full potential. But I grew up uh, Catholic. I grew up a uh, cradle Catholic, very much into church. I was an altar boy, really understood my values and my morals. My parents, you know, raised me the right way. So as far as I went into the wild side of life, I never went to the point of no return because I always knew who I was inside. As, as bad as I was, right? I always knew who I was inside. Uh, and I'm talking about hospitals, jail, overnight, many overnights uh, that I would have uh, fights all the time. And, um, and eventually my parents ended up, uh, my mom built a, a six figure business through Jaffa Cosmetics, you know? And um, she had this lady who kept poking her saying, you need to do this business, multi level marketing. Mom's like, I'm not a salesperson. There's no way I'm gonna do that. And eventually my dad said, go for it, just go for it. So she, my, my mom had this one lady in Potomac, Maryland. I had a lot of money, big house. And uh, that was kind of like one of her mentors that she would clean her house. And she asked her, she's like, what do you think? This lady keeps trying to promote her, her business to me. What, what should I do? Should I give it a shot? And the lady told my mom, listen, just stick to what you're good at. Like cleaning houses is your calling in life. That's, that's pretty much what you're going to do. And she asked really her good. friend and that's the advice friend yeah. gave her. Yeah. She said, this is what you're going to do. And this is your calling. Just stick to that. Don't, don't, don't try to do that. Trust me, you're going to waste your time, your money, your, your family needs you anyway. So just focus on what you're doing now. You're good at it, right? That pissed off my mom. Sorry for the word. And <laughs> awesome. she, uh, she went back to home, told my, my dad. My dad said, no, go for it. So they did it. My mom went for it. And one thing led to another. They ended up with my dad with a couple of restaurants. My mom, multiple six-figure business uh, nationwide. She ended up being a tremendous leader and trainer and coach and speaker. And um, they ended up buying a million dollar home in, in Brookville, Maryland, and they, they, they did it. Now they're retired. But that is my story from poor rags to losing my way to my parents inspiring me to be better and me eventually meeting my wife and having kids and changing my life. 
Did your mom, like the, the new income from this multi-level marketing company, help your dad open up restaurants? Uh, yes, because um, uh, not completely, but it definitely helped. And my dad was networking and getting investors and various people. But eventually he left that whole thing and was like helping my mom in the business, supporting the business and stuff like that. And then he ended up going back to his roots and said, you know what? I want to open my own restaurant. Good and I what, he went. what a story, man. Holy cannoli. All right. So when, how old were you when you stopped, I guess, not stop getting in trouble, but you said 12 years. So high school, let's say 16, 17. So till about 27 to 30, 27, 28. Yeah. You were a knucklehead. I was a tremendous knucklehead. Like and then, bar fights and you name it, all kinds of stuff. So, so what happened? I mean, what was the turning point? Uh, I had a number of moments where I thought this was my wake up call and it wasn't you know because i wasn't on the floor completely right so um, i was very close you know and they say you can't fall off the floor so you know i kept falling but i was still like falling so i was not quite on the floor so um a lot of things happened to the point where i had this this girl that i was dating and then i i met my my current wife you know my wife um and i was like in between do i want this new relationship or do i want to stick with what i know that is not serving me, right? And I, I took a leap of faith and I said, I'm gonna go with this new girl that I think is, is wholesome, is good. Uh, she's also Catholic, master's degree, uh, super sharp, uh, self-sufficient uh, athlete. She's a gymnast, all these amazing things about her. I was like, this sounds like a better deal over here. But the problem with this deal is this person is gonna make me rise higher and make you me- give up who you man. are. Yeah, make me become a man because I'm still kind of like a boy inside, right? And this one over here is going to let me still do my thing. And it's also not serving me, but it's very supportive and very loving. So I said, which one should I go with? And eventually this didn't work out naturally. And I went over here and she is a lot of the reason why I ended up making that, that wake up call, that shift that, you know what, I got to become a man. I got to tap into um, my calling, which is to impact lives and to, to make a change and a difference. Man, how old are you now, Jose? 39. All right. So now you've been living this new life for about 10 years. Yeah. Man. Okay. Talk to me, man. First few steps of the transformation. So Jose, bar fighter to, I mean, there's, you know, to the guy with, how many books do you think you have behind you right now? If you guys are listening, go to YouTube, check out Lead, Sell, Grow YouTube channel, and watch the video of this because you're going to see this guy's bookshelf. Yeah, uh, I have about um, 2,222 or 23 books as of now. Based on what you see behind me, I have a, a whole ton on the floor. I just bought a bookshelf. Another one like you see here behind me, <laughs> Blair, I'm going to put on that side because I have books on the floor. I have books in front of me in a smaller shelf. I have books everywhere. So about 2,222 or 23 the goal is to get 10,000 books and to kind of like be in a space where that's where I do my stuff and I'm surrounded by, by knowledge. I just love it. To get the books or to read 10,000 books? To, to own 10,000 books. Um, and who, how many re I read? I don't know, maybe 5,000, maybe half. But for every book I read, I buy five. And oh. right now I'm on a trajectory of about uh, one and a half books a week is the average. Wow. All right. So talk to me. You're the morning routine. Well, hold on. Before that, I need to understand because there's some people right now who are living a life. They're nowhere near where you are. They're not getting in bar fights. They're not doing crazy stuff. They're not getting arrested, but they just hate where they are. Yeah. They're, they're driving to work. They're sitting in traffic. They're going to a job they hate and they're really praying that they don't get fired today. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, that's kind of the mindset there. What can they do? Like if a guy like you took such a drastic made such a drastic change in 10 years what were the first steps that you could remember taking so one thing is for sure you know we can decide today that we want to do something and then decide tomorrow that we change our minds right so it's not so much a decision it's a really a commitment mm. and i'm a man of commitment so if i know i'm not going to see something through or there's a possibility i just won't commit to it you know which is why i was single for a long time you know, and uh, and why I wasn't changing and, and I was just living life and doing my thing. So 
it's really about making a commitment. So digging deep inside of you, it's about cutting yourself open and looking inside uh, through the hard questions. The I, I call it examination of conscience, which I do every night before I go to bed. I examine my conscience and say, where was I good? Where was I bad? What could I have done better? Why did this happen? Why did I let that happen? Why didn't I attack it this way? You know, what was my wins? What were my losses? Uh, what did I learn? All these like tough questions I ask myself. And in the discovery process, right, because reflection turns into insight, I think John Maxwell talks about that, is um, you got to ask yourself the hard questions. Why are you not tapping into your full potential? Because we all have the possibility to do whatever we want to do, really, with us within reason. You know, you might not dunk like LeBron James if, you know, you're 5'2". You know, so you got to be realistic. Like, what am I capable of? But in terms of, like, building a business, especially in, in my opinion, number one country in the world with equal opportunity where anybody can just go roll up their sleeves and bootstrap it and start a network marketing business and start there as you're like, you know, even playing field. So there's no excuse to not be an entrepreneur. But then again, an entrepreneur is not for everybody, which is why the three percenters are there. And there's 97% on the other side of the field. I always say, if you can't see the herd, you're in it, right? So you got to set yourself apart. You got to ask yourself, what is the lowest hanging fruit? What am I good at? What, what, am I, what do I enjoy doing? What talents, natural God-given talents do I have? And what skill sets am I willing to develop with some sacrifice? And then as you identify these things, make a commitment to jump into that. And then your full potential is around the corner, really. Yeah, so this sounds like a guy speaking who's read a bunch of books on personal development and had aha moments and reflection. That wasn't step one or two, was it? Step one was I had to be real with myself. I sat down and I said, you know, self, like, why are you behaving this way? Why are you not doing the things you know you can do? Why are you not tapping into who you are called to be, right? Because I always had this internal battle. I call it, my personal take on it is uh, spiritual warfare, right? That the devil and God, that's the way I see it. You can call it whatever you want to call it, but I see it as spiritual warfare. And I knew that I was fighting myself on what I knew I could and should do. So step one for me was just sitting down with myself and taking time to reflect, taking time to think, what, what are the patterns? What are the patterns as to why I'm, I'm just laxy daisy and being average and, and doing this monotonous routine of going through like to, to the job, driving in traffic, going there, not being happy in between four walls and not enjoying my coworkers and having other people take your credit. And then you get a paycheck and they tell you what to do, when to do it and how to do it. And then you come back in traffic and you go back in your door and you got to go back to the other job, which is your family or whatever it is that you have going on, because now it's a chore. You can't really enjoy the other side of your life because you're so like, you know, taken down and bogged down by your, your day job. Right. So and there's nothing wrong with a day job. It's just, is it right for you? So for me, it was just asking myself the questions. Why am I where I want to be? And I realized, and, and so I had a mentor who told me one time, which was a bitter pill to swallow. He said, Jose, you are where you are in your life right now because you chose to be there. Mm, that's a hard one. And you are still there where you are right now because you choose to stay there. And he's like, if you want to change your life, you want to change your game, you want to change the trajectory of everything that is in store for you, for you and your family, it is up to you. You got to make a commitment. You got to just, you know, sit down on paper or start writing down what it is that you want and ask yourself, what is holding you back from all these things that you want? And once you have those two lists of what you want and what is holding you back, the truth is somewhere in the middle there of what needs to happen in terms of just pulling the trigger and getting it done. Oh man, that is, that's freaking awesome, dude. That is there. You said, you said a whole lot there. You said a whole lot there and that's, Okay. So then what gave you the idea for the entrepreneur's bookshelf? So in 2019, I had a serious sit down talk with my wife and I said, something's got to give because yes, I'm a better person now. Uh, I'm doing things. I'm making money. I'm, I'm working out. I'm, my spiritual life is there. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I was doing all these things and I'm in a whole different place in terms of like, generally speaking, but I'm in a very average place because I'm average all of those things. Nothing was like, like, wow, that's amazing. It was all just, oh, he's just an average guy. You know, he's doing good things, but he's an average guy. 
So I said, I wanted to be more. I wanted to do more. I wanted to create more impact, right? So I told her, I'm going to commit. This is now uh, December 30 something, go, uh, 2018, going into 2019. So I said, starting this uh, January 1st, um, 2019 to December 31st, 2019, I'm going to commit to a morning routine and an evening routine. I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. Monday through Friday and go to bed by 1030 religiously, zero excuses, zero compromise, high level discipline, extreme ownership. I'm going to get it done. And because I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner, I've been even when I was reckless, I was still learning. I was always like a sponge trying to like find, you know, people to learn from. And for well over a decade, I've been going to seminars and summits and conventions and podcasts and YouTube and paid mentorship and you you name it. I've always been learning. But information without implementation is, is just head knowledge. So I was not really applying anything. I was just learning, learning, learning. So I told her, I'm going to just start implementing a lot of this stuff that I've learned about morning routine and evening routine, because that's always been like a niche area, like high performance of what interested me the most. So the Robin Sharma's, the Hal Elrods, the, the Tony Robbins, all these people that would talk about this stuff. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to start doing. So in that one year, I committed relentlessly. And sure enough, I became a better father. I became a better husband. How do I know that? Because of the feedback that I was getting and, and the, the dynamic in the house changed dramatically. My spiritual life went to an all-time high. I was praying the rosary every day, which takes 30, that's like 30 minutes of prayer right there. That's a lot of commitment. You know, uh, I was going to mass every Sunday, uh, really engaging. I, I went, I became a Knight of Columbus. I started really getting involved in my church with community and giving back. Um, I lost 36 pounds that year. I uh, financially doubled my income. I got a raise at my job. I got the sales director position for the U.S. territory for my martial arts company I worked for. That position, Eric, didn't exist. They created the position because in the first 90 days of me doing this, they realized this is a different Jose. He's showing up earlier. He's staying later. He's outperforming everybody. He's adding value to our office. He's reading books during lunch when everybody else is hanging out and having a good time. Something is different. He has more value to give here. Let's promote the guy. So they created that position. I launched my social media marketing agency from scratch. I said, I don't know how to start a business. I don't know where to go. I don't know what my skill sets are, but I do know this. I do know social media is a big thing. So I said, who's, who's an expert out there in social media that can teach me? So I reached out to Ty Lopez. He has this like social media marketing agency uh, program. I paid the guy thousands of dollars, which I didn't have. I borrowed some money from a few people. I got a loan and I paid the guy. And I learned how to launch my own social media marketing agency. It was called Fat Class Marketing. So with that, I took that information, got my certification from Ty Lopez, and I opened up my agency. And I started going to restaurants and bars saying, hey, listen, I can pack your place out because I know the strategies and how to manage your social media and blah, 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 blah. So between my raise and all these restaurants that I was getting, I doubled my income that year. I was in a much financial better place. I started getting out of debt. Intellectually, I was stimulated like never before. I started reading a book a week. Um, emotionally, I used to be very unstable. I was now doing this, a nice trajectory, right? Literally, my 10 life domains. Michael Hyatt talks about this in his book, uh, Your Best Year Ever. 10 life domains. Across the board, Jose Escobar became 10x, like Grant Cardone talks about. I 10 x across the board in my life. So I said, wow, if I can do that in a year, I can teach other people how to do the same thing so sure enough, I hired a guy named Richard Yu, um, and I got this award here, High Performance Influencer uh, from Richard Yu. is a YouTube sensation guy, teaches people how to launch a program from scratch based on what you know and monetize it. So I paid that guy. I was like, listen, I have this idea of something I just did in my life. I want to take it, turn it into a program, an eight-week program, and I want to help other people do that. It took me two years, Eric, from when I did that to when I actually launched, a little over two years because of imposter syndrome, excuses, lack of confidence, procrastination. I, I, in my mind, I was a perfectionist. I need to get it just right. I need to have the right camera. I need to have the right lighting. I need to know exactly what to say. I need to, it was really procrastination in disguise. It wasn't perfectionism. It was procrastination in disguise because of lack of confidence and lack of all these other things. And what are they going to say? Imposter syndrome, you name it. So sure enough, I launched my program and in nine, a little over nine months, Eric, 180K. Good job. From scratch. Good job. Wow. 
Are you able to share some of the routine here? Like what was your morning routine and or is that kind of give up your, you know, paid not, service? <laughs> not, not at all. Not at all. I'm an open book. So, um, so this is the book that goes into the program. This is a, uh, a proprietary sheet that I use with all my clients. Um, it's evolving, but this is what I started with uh, a little over nine months ago. Mm -hmm. And it's the morning routine, the evening routine, how long each thing is and uh, Monday through Friday and how long it takes me in the morning, right? And there's a nice little quote at the top. Every, all the sheets have a different quote. It says here, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit, Aristotle, right? So uh, for me, my morning routine, generally speaking, because uh, it's always evolving. And I'll say this right now, morning routines, evening routines are never like a one-stop shop. I've arrived because we evolve as humans, right? As professionals, we might have more kids. We might change positions in our job or careers altogether, or we might have multiple businesses or whatever, a new goal fitness-wise, whatever the case may be. So it's always evolving. And I check in with my morning routine and evening routine every six months. So every six months I come back and I say, how do I tweak this a little bit to make it better, right? Mm -hmm. Because anything that's not tweaked becomes stale, right? So I have to like constantly go back and revisit. So, um, so a couple of things I do in the morning is uh, prayer. That's huge for me, uh, which includes Bible study. I also um, have affirmations. And affirmations, I think, um, are, are super critical. So I have a couple right here uh, from this morning. I'm just going to read a couple just to give you an idea. I am a first class confident speaker. I am someone of great influence and well connected. I am a humble person and grateful for all the blessings God pours into my life. I am honest and trustworthy. I am a leader, not a follower. I am a smart saver of money and a brilliant investor. I am optimistic and always choose to see the good in everything and everyone. I am a magnet for money. I am debt-free with multiple streams of income. I am mentally tough. I'm a man of character, virtue, and discipline. I am followed by many and mentor thousands of people. The list goes on and on and on, right? So I brainwash myself every single morning in a positive way because we will never outperform how we see ourselves. And how we see ourselves is a direct alignment of what you say to yourself. And also what you accept from other people that speak into your life and all of your surroundings and circumstances in your environment, right? So I, I realized success breeds success. So, and it starts with how you think and how you think is what do you say, you know? So what is the input and that affects the output. So affirmations is huge. Visualization, that's another thing. I have a big board. I have all the things of what I'm trying to achieve, both monetary and just, you know, non-monetary. Um, there's, I spend time in, in visualization. I also work out. So I work out every single morning, at least Monday through Friday, I work out uh, and it could be a light work. Today I did yoga, for example, I did it with Paula, Paula Lamy, right? So I think you met her. She's um, in the John Maxwell team and she's in the Connect Leaders Academy, but Paula has this, this program called Reset Yoga, right? So today it was like sunrise yoga or something like that. So I'm trying to add different elements to my workout because I'm always in the weight room here in my garage in my gym so I want to do like some more like cardio some more body weight stuff some more flexibility stuff so I did yoga today so I do fitness um I also have uh, journaling I journal in the morning uh, which is super and I know you're a big journaler so uh, I do a lot of journaling I check a little bit of email I do a little bit of social media so there's like a, a long list of things that I do my morning routine is from 4 a.m to 7 a.m Monday through Friday yeah, no more 5 a.m. Now you got to wake up earlier to get more stuff in. That's the evolve. Okay. Yeah, dude, my started around 5 a.m. before and it was just go to the gym. Then when I was writing my book, it became 4 a.m. because that's when I would do it. Then when I added journaling, meditation and uh, visualization and gratitude. Now it's 315 <laughs> and it just, anytime I need to add something else, I just less sleep. <laughs> this is more important. That's right. Um, but yeah, what a difference that makes, man. So people listening, and this is, this is the toughest thing to connect. If you're not in personal growth and personal development, how is it that meditation, prayer, uh, affirmations, working out doubles the income right because they believe that they have to do they have to take certain actions to double the income yeah you're not taking certain actions i feel like you're taking actions in a certain way after you had that morning routine but it's not about doing it's about who you're being isn't it 
That is so true, what you just said. It is exactly that because, you know, doing the work, if you don't have the foundation, right, the proper foundation to a house built on brick, right, and built on cement, it's going to fall apart like a three little pigs with a straw house, right? So you can do the work and you can even do the right work. It just won't be sustainable because you don't have the foundation. And the foundation is how you think. The foundation is how you feel. You know, and a lot of that self-love, get, you get to that stage of self-love with self-care. And if you're not taking care of yourself and making you a priority, then what exactly is coming out of that cup you're trying to pour, right? If you don't have it in you, right? You don't have, you're not hitting that spirituality. You're not hitting that, that um, the physicality. You're not hitting the mental piece, the emotional piece, the heart set, right? Like you got to pour into you. And only when you do that, you start to think differently because how you think goes into how you speak and how you speak goes into what you do, how you act. And if you do that, you know, long enough, it becomes your character and your character becomes your destiny, right? So it all is about a matter of habits. So we all have habits that hurt us and then we have success habits. So the morning routine and the evening routine, which I call it the bookends of your day, how you start your day and how you end your day. A lot of people don't put any focus on the evening routine. I, I, I heavily do because I think they're connected for maximum productivity. So if you have success habits in place, blueprints, staples in your day, the pillars, then it's very hard to stay lazy. It's very hard to not fulfill the priorities that you set out for the day. It's very hard. It actually becomes harder to be average and to be lazy and to do nothing than it is to be successful. Is it a, is a part of that? Because like, you know, at the end of the day, you got to reflect and answer some tough questions. Yes. And so if you have a task to do, it's going to be like, man, I'm not going to be happy with myself later if I don't get this shit done because I got to stay accountable for it. Is that a part of it? That's, that's a big piece of it because accountability, right? You got to check in with yourself. You got to be accountable to yourself. But there's also this, this piece here, a calendar. So if you're not using a calendar, then by, def by default, the day plans you. So are you planning the day or is the day planning you? you know, are you going into oncoming traffic, right? Or are you kind of going in the lane that you want to go and at the speed you want to go and in the right direction? Yeah. So a lot of people let the day come to them when you should be going to the day appropriately. All right. So what's the evening routine like? So the evening routine uh, goes, a couple of things are also in my evening routine that are in my morning routine. So one of the most important things I do is planning the schedule for the day. So I don't do it the morning of, I do it the night before. Mm -hmm. And you've heard it before, the best morning routine starts the night before. So what I do is at night, I plan my schedule. What are my three non-negotiable things that need to happen the next day? The to-do list, right? Um, and then I have a top priority. What is the top priority? The most important thing that if everything fails and an emergency comes up, as long as I got that done, it was a good day, right? And you also got to know the difference between a terrible, a bad, a good, and a great day. You got to have the metrics to good, know what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah, you got to know what the metrics are. Like, how do you gauge whether it was a good, bad, or terrible, or great day, right? You got to know that. So if you don't know that, I'll start there. But so I um, plan my calendar the next day, the night before. And then I also do prayer. I read 20 minutes. And usually reading for me, I do an hour, about 45 minutes to an hour a day. More so lately, an hour a day. 20, 20, and 20. Or I do 30 and 30, right? Depending on, on the situation. Uh, so I do some reading. Uh, I also plan out my uh my fitness so what am i what am i going to wear the next day right which goes to my bedtime routine there's a difference between a bedtime routine and an evening routine so the bedtime routine i got to lay out my gym clothes properly i got to make sure if I, usually it's going to be shorts and a t-shirt so i'm already wearing that when i go to bed my shoes are right there my alarm clock is on the opposite side of the room that's set like the environment for good sleep is is prepared right whether the, the uh the, the bedding the, uh, the light, the, uh, the temperature, I mean, you name it, right? So it's a whole process, a whole ordeal there. Um, and then the commonplacing. Commonplacing is huge when it comes to my evening routine. And most people that I talk to, Eric, don't know what commonplacing even means. Yeah, you know? I'm, I'm wondering what the hell it means right now. <laughs> <laughs> so commonplacing, uh, historically, it's called a commonplace book. 
the commonplace book back to like Marcus Aurelius in the Stoic days, right? All the way to people like Ronald Reagan, you know, and Bill Gates and um, Elon Musk. And, and what, what happens is love them or hate them, it's a phenomenal thing. John Maxwell does it. How do you think he wrote 90 books? And they're all like dense, like they're rich in content. They're right? rich in content, yeah. yeah. And the reason why is because he he does commonplace. And he talks oh, he's about, got a place where he just writes his books yeah. and thinks. No, no, so, yeah, so he has a, one of the rules of five for him is filing. Every day he files. I file, I file, I file, right? So filing is commonplace. And so what I do is I have three by five index cards. And I have a uh, like a big, huge filing system. And I have about 150 categories. And I have the categories of like success, failure, mindset, health, uh, nutrition, um, you know, speaking, whatever, right? And then what I do is every single night, I file five things away that could have come from a podcast that I heard. It could have come from a book that I was just reading. It could have come from a conversation with a mentor who said something that was like, oh, that's an aha moment, right? Or a writer downer, as they say. Or I was um, listening, watching a YouTube video and something powerful came up. Or well, it doesn't matter where it came from. Or for me, I have a number of magazines that I read, Entrepreneur Magazine, Inc. Magazine, uh, Forbes Magazine. So like if there's an article, it, it could be a quote, it could be a poem, it could be a thought, it could be a statement, it could be a stat. It could be anything that you can use for future reference. So what I do is I, I, for example, let's say I got a quote from a book. I'll write the chapter of the book. I'll write the page number. I'll mm -hmm. put the exact quote and I will put it in the appropriate category of whatever that quote where it belongs. And then what happens is whenever I'm going to give a talk or I'm going to do a training or I'm going to write a book, I literally just say, what is it going to be about? Okay, let me consult my commonplace book. And then I look there and I have anything and everything I need to be effective man it's way easier not to do that just yeah. saying <laughs> yes, it, it sounds like you're just super intentional about every single thing that's how i changed my life uh, eric yeah intentionality is huge intentionality and how you do anything is how you do everything so i apply intentionality across the board yeah no you you know what you gave me an aha moment today is i don't have a evening routine i just don't my, you know, 3.15 till about 10 p.m. when we put the kids down, um, my brain's fried. I haven't really, I have the time. It's not, it's not that I don't have the time. It's just really so much easier not to do it. Right. But it probably would feel so good if I did do it. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to give that a shot. So thanks to you, Jose. I definitely will give that a shot. And I got the aha moment for me came from 75 hard. Because up until, because one thing that I learned from that program was you, you, there's a very, very clear line of what a successful day is and what a failed day is. And if you drank less than, you know, one ounce less than a gallon of water, you failed. You didn't read 10 pages. You read nine pages and three quarters of a page, yeah. failed. Didn't work out for 45 minutes, failed. Didn't work out outside, failed. Like, I was like, man, this is one way to live life. Where else can I look at things and just have a clear definition of here's where it was a success and here's where it was a failure. And we don't have that for our days, don't, do we? Generally speaking, no. Yeah. And that's exactly right, yeah. What about people that you're coaching? I mean, what's the success rate, right? Because I have some coaching clients and a lot of them are stuck in their, you know, they want to develop a routine. They want to, they want to have the morning routine. I'm not as intense as you are because I, you know, I can't, can't give what I don't have. I don't have any, any real experience in an evening routine, but for someone who's not doing that at all, they get excited. They want to do it. And three, four days into it, they're back to their old habits of not doing it because it's way easier not to. Sure. So how do you coach people through that part? Yeah. So you said something earlier. You said it's it's uh, it's hard to like do the evening routine. It's easier not to do it. Right. But at the end, at the end of the day, a mentor of mine uh, said to me um, and I always quote mentors. I, I, I feel terrible. because Sometimes I forget their names of who said what. But a mentor of mine said to me, Jose, we are not here to take up the easy. And I was like, man, like that. Then why does that come so natural? Yeah. <laughs> why doesn't the hard stuff come natural? Yeah. It's so easy of a statement, but it's so rich in like, you know, thought process, right? So with that being said, I pre-screen people aggressively before I take them on as a, as a client. 
because I, it's easy to say, yeah, man, give me your thousands of dollars. You know, I gladly put you in my program and let's do it because it's about the money. I care about impact because it's been said and I, and, and I agree wholeheartedly with the statement that in, income is directly aligned to impact. So I know a lot of people that have a lot of income that's empty because there's no impact, right? I want to make as much impact as I can make in people's lives to help them move the needle, right? Which means professionally and personally, right? And in doing so, like Zig Ziglar says, you help enough people get what they want, you're gonna get what you want. So that's kind of like my focus. So when I sit down with somebody, I don't, there's no link for you to go and sign up to, to get my coaching. There is no, uh, hey, I just wanna do it, here's my money. We sit down and have a strategy session. And it's one hour long. If you can make it through the one hour long of me going into your life and, and discovering a few things that are going to determine whether we have chemistry, whether we can work together, where you're hungry, whether you're hungry, whether you're serious about this, then uh, I've been a no very quickly in one hour. And I'm pretty good at gauging people and, and who they are pretty easily. Um, I've always had that uh, ability to like just know like this is somebody I want to be aligned with or not. I can just tell pretty quickly. So um, but in the hour, I'm going to identify, is this a good fit? Can I help them? Because I can't help everybody. And I don't want to help everybody because that, then it's like it's like a one size fits all and it's not that way. So if they're a good fit, then I get them in. And if they come in, they understand I'm signing up for high level accountability. I'm signing up for moments where I'm not going to like Jose. Because Jose is going to call me out and put the sugar on the shelf because sugar is for kids, right? And he's going to not sugarcoat anything. He's going to tell you straight up. <laughs> sugar is for kids. So, yeah, you said this is what you wanted to do. You paid for the program. This is what I'm here to help you do is to get to from point A to point B, right? And this is going to require this. So I need you to tell me, explain to me, dive into it, right? And usually they know the answers. And if you can get them to identify what the problem is themselves, they're going to like you a little bit more. But sometimes they're not going to do that. And then it's my job to call them out and, and to put them where they need to be. And that's the accountability piece. So that's the difference to me between a course and a program. And a that's program, where jujitsu comes in and you choke them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> put them in the arm bar. That would be nice, <laughs> but you know, probably, no, not a good idea. So, so that's the difference between a course and a program is a, a course, you know, 500 bucks, 50 bucks, a thousand dollars maybe. Um, but no accountability. I may or may not watch the module modules. I, I may get the job done and I just kind of set it and forget it. Um, uh, a program is now a community. Mm. It's now uh, modules. It's now action items. Start applying what you're doing along the way. It's now high level accountability. It's uh, the whole experience. So that's why it costs a little bit more like an arm and a leg, but the outcome is going to be A, what you put into it and B, the skin in the game that's awesome my man jose how can people who are listening in uh connect with you or find you so uh, you can go to my website the website is the entrepreneurs bookshelf.com apostrophe and, s or just s just s uh the the business name has an apostrophe s the entrepreneurs but in this case the website the entrepreneurs bookshelf.com and uh, you can pretty much learn pretty much everything that i have going on there uh, and then, of course, on Facebook, I'm there, and uh, there, that's pretty much where I live. I live on Facebook. Most of my social media is there. I'm also on Instagram, and I'm also on LinkedIn, but I barely use those. Uh, eventually, I'll get there, but uh, easy to find. Put the at symbol, J-A-E-S-C-O-2-5, so J-A-S-C-O-25, and that handle, you can find me on any of those platforms pretty easily, and that's going to work. And then people can pre-order your book coming out in January. I mean, what a great, it's a, I mean, it's a great time, right? Everybody's going to have New Year's resolutions. Might as well figure out how to create a morning routine and how to win that day. The book is winning the day. And then yeah. you also have Connected Leaders Academy. That's right. Talk a little bit about that group because you guys are pretty impressive with what you've done. Yeah, um, just really quick. This is the book that you just referenced. I have the cover here, awesome. uh, January 6th. So January 6th, Winning the Day, an Entrepreneur's Guide to Morning and Evening Routine Mastery. So it's available for pre-sale now for signed personalized copies. Uh, just go to winningthedaybook.com. So winningthedaybook.com. And there's that. So in terms of my Connected Leaders Academy uh, membership, that idea came to me in January of this year. Uh, not long ago, this is like the end of January, essentially February. And I said to myself, you know what? I have met thousands of people 
uh, over the course of the last 15 years. From my personal lifelong investing in myself, I go to Grand Cardone events every year. I go to Les Brown, Brendan Burchard, everywhere, right? And everywhere I go, I pay VIP because proximity is key. And then on my day job, part of my role was booking celebrity keynote speakers for our summits. So I book people like Gary Vaynerchuk, Chuck Norris, Boss Rutten. Uh, I get to meet all these awesome people. And I said to myself, well, between all the travels that I've done on both sides and all the people I've met over the years, they all know me, but they don't know each other. So the idea hit me. And I said, now that I have momentum, right? I have my entrepreneur's bookshelf, the program side. I have the book that I just wrote that's about to come out. I have the merchandise line of t-shirts, coffee mugs, journals, whatever. I have the one-on-one -on -one coaching business. The income streams are growing. I was like, what else can I do now that momentum's on my side? So I said, let me launch a membership subscription-based model, right, for entrepreneurs. So in a very short period of time, Eric, it has grown to 214 members as of uh, today, as of this recording, 214 members, uh, paid members, and we are in 11 countries. Uh, we just expanded into Egypt. We are in uh, South Africa, Pakistan, uh, UK, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Guatemala, the list goes on. We're in 34 states, coast to coast across the U.S. Um, if I had to just kind of give you an idea we have about 25 beginner entrepreneurs right but they're moving aggressively go-getters so they qualify we have about 25 seven eight nine figure earners we're talking multimillionaires, right we have about 75 people that are in the category of entrepreneurship where they're over six figures but under a million somewhere in that spread and then we have about 20 75 entrepreneurs that are not quite beginners or past that but they're still under six figures so we have that variety so you're going to find entrepreneurs that have different levels of experience, different income levels, and different entrepreneurial backgrounds. We have real estate investors, coaches, speakers, authors, publishing companies, the list goes on and on and on. And the whole idea uh, to wrap up this piece as to why I even started the Connect Leaders Academy outside of like, you know, recurring revenue was because I said, you know what, like, let me just create a hub. I don't want to be the guru. I just want to create the space and an environment where entrepreneurs globally can come together to learn and grow personally and professionally, they can continue to scale their influence because we all want to be the, the, uh, the authority in our space, right? Um, number three, to move the needle. And that means more referrals, more clients, more money, the bottom line, right? Number four is to develop our skill sets because we're all working on something. We never arrive. There's always going to be somewhere where we need to grow. And you're going to find that the areas where you need to grow, somebody else in the membership is masterful and vice versa. So iron sharpens iron. And number five is you're going to continue to grow your network and your circle like never before. That's where we're headed now. We're going to be at a thousand members very, very soon. And I just signed a very scary contract. This is news, newsflash. Um, I signed a very scary contract, um, a contract of an exorbitant amount of money that I never thought I would ever sign, that I signed for the first ever Connected Leaders Academy Global Summit that's going to be in Maryland. It's going to be, and the dates are official. It's October 13th to the 15th, 2023, next year. And it's going to be either at the MGM, uh, MGM Grand here in National Harbor or at the Gaylord, one of the two, whichever one gives us a better deal and can hold a thousand people because we're going to have a thousand attendees. We're going to have uh, non-members. We're going to have members, vendor opportunities, sponsors, celebrity keynote speaker, cocktail hour with hors d'oeuvres and networking. We're going to have uh, panels on stage a DJ, a formal banquet, five-star sit-down dinner, award ceremony, a gala. It's going to be absolutely Oof. insane. So that sounds like fun. Be, yeah. Hey, man, that's awesome. Because when you got that idea, you didn't, you didn't throw up like a Facebook ad, hey, join this awesome new thing. You picked up the phone, you were calling people. That's right. Proactive. I love that. I absolutely love that. And then selected the first 50 people that I knew. I was like, who are the top players in the world of entrepreneurship that I know personally, that know, like, and trust me, that are going to be like, sure, I'll give it a whirl. I'll join you on this movement. And I, I yeah, see because it. it's like, I mean, it, it was nothing. It was like, what, 40 bucks a month or something like yeah, that? Initially, it was, it was 42 for the founding members initially, right? Got it. Went up now? Now it's 97. And in two weeks, it goes up to 197. So Oof. 200 a month. And now I offer annual membership. So a lot of the people that are coming in now are paying annually and they save a little bit of money that way. Man. Hey, awesome. Jose, so cool to see you grow, brother. I'm glad we got a chance to talk. I'm, I want to thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedule and spending the time with me. Uh, if you guys don't know this guy, go connect with him. Join the Connected Leaders Academy. Get yourself into the circle of other entrepreneurs. 
um, because your net work is going to end up being your net worth. <laughs> net worth. That's right. Jose, thanks, my man. It was so good to have you here. You had a tremendous amount of value to me and I'm sure to a bunch of listeners. I am super honored and blessed and just excited to be here. I've been following your podcast for a while and there's a few heavy hitters that are now saying, Hey, Jose, I'd love to, for you to be on my podcast. And I'm like, that is a sign you're doing something because I was like, one day I'll be on Eric's podcast and here we are. Get out of here. It's an honor. Thank you. Oh man. Thank you, bro. I'll see you. And if you guys are still with us, go to Facebook, join the group. Tell me what you thought about Jose. And uh, maybe I'll give you his personal cell phone number. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>